Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Cloud Deep Dive. In this whole series, we are talking about VPC networking and in today's topic, we will talk about VPC DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Before we deep dive into DHCP, let's first understand few concepts of networking uh, which is related to this DHCP. First, let's talk about static IP and dynamic IP. So what are these? Static IP is basically a dedicated unchanging IP address that is assigned to the device and you need to manually provide uh, information like your subnet mask, gateway, DNS host, NetBIOS, etc. etc. And if you need to make any changes to this, you have to change it manually. Other is dynamic IP. Dynamic IP is like dynamically assigned or dynamic address assigned from a pool of IP addresses within a DHCP scope. So you have a pool of IP address from that pool. A particular IP address will be assigned to your device. And DHCP server, there is a, there will be a server who will be taking care of all those things. So they will call a DHCP server who, which maintain all these IP addresses, your subnet mask, basically all the configuration which you need to assign to a particular device, that DHCP server maintain that and from that server, this IP and other configuration will be assigned. So you don't need to handle manually, that server will take care of that and DHCP server manage the IP addresses. So how it works? If you remember in older days um, in your company, whenever you get a new computer, Somebody from network department used to come to your desk and put all this information like IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, preferred DNS servers, and alternative and DNS servers. And once they put this information into your computer, then your computer was connected to your com company network. But the problem with this kind of approach was that network department has to maintain a list of all the private IP addresses which are assigned to you to your computer in case by mistake if they assign the same IP address to two different devices there will be conflict and uh, there will be issue and if case they need to change any DNS servers or something then they have to do it manually to own all the computers and you can assume that if uh, in your company you have a uh, lot of people a thousands of uh, hundred thousand people then it will be very difficult to uh, go with this approach so to solve that we have a process kind of like uh, DHCP server uh, which dynamically allocate that IP address. So how that process work? You have a server and you have a client. So whenever a client joins your network, this server assign the IP address, dynamically assign the IP address to this client. And the whole process where this client requests your IP and the server assign a IP to this client, this is called a DORA process. So what is a DORA? Each letter in this stands for something like P stands for discover, O stands for offer, R stands for request, and A stands for acknowledge. And what does that mean? D discover. Discovery means that whenever a client comes to a network, it sends a discovery request, sends that, okay, oh, hey, I'm new to this server or new to this network. Can somebody assign that IP address to me? And that request goes to all the devices on your uh, network. Other devices which are not DHCP server will reject that, but the DHCP server will listen that request and it will say that, oh, hey, I can offer you IP address. So second process is offer. So first client is going uh, for a discovery, then server is going to offer a IP address uh, to that client. So once the IP address is offered to the client, client will say, hey, I would like to have this IP address. Can you give it to me? So they will send a request to get this IP address allocated to this client. So once the request is made to the server, server will make a note of it. This IP address is assigned to the client and they will send an acknowledgement. And with that, uh, this server or this server will assign an IP address to this client and the whole process will be completed and which is called a DORA process. Now, this IP address will be assigned for a particular time frame. We call it lease. Time to time, this server, this client has to renew this lease, and that this server will take care of that. That renewing the lease. So suppose maybe one hour, two hour, maybe six hour, that lease is signed, and after that they will renew that lease, and the same IP address might be assigned to that. So if in this case, if you need to change any configuration uh, for that, like like if you want to change any subnet mask or you want to change any DNS configuration to to all this, all the clients. You can change into the DSCP server and next time your release is renewed, those configuration will be replicated to all your clients. So you don't need to go and manually change it. 
you just whenever this change or lease will renew those configurations will be applied to all your clients so that is the basics of dhcp uh, since you got an idea that what is the dhcp and how it assigned ip and all the dhcp configuration like uh, dns servers and all those let's go to the vpc console and how let us see how it works in a vpc okay guys so i have logged in into my aws console and i am under my vpc section if i go to dhcp options set so by default aws create a uh, default aws uh, sorry dhcp option set and this is the one which i created so i'll go to it uh, in a moment so by default dhcp option set give you that dns name what uh, the domain name it will be whenever you launch in C2 instance what domain name it will get and uh, who is will be who will be your dns uh, resolver like dns dns provide provided dns will be a resolver so uh, in your vpc you will see by default uh, the default tscp option set is assigned to it and if you want to assign the new one you can go to the edit tscp option set and you can assign a new one so let's first see that how we can create the new dscp option set for that you can go to create dhcp option set you can provide the name you can provide the domain name like uh, support example dot com or maybe cloud deep type dot com then you can provide the domain name server it can be any server so which you want to use to resolve your dns then you can provide your NDP and map by the servers and you can create so since i have already created i want to do anything with that one thing you have to keep in mind that whenever you create a dscp option set you cannot change it you cannot modify it you could delete it and re-modify or kind of recreate it so i have created a uh, test one with uh, cloud deep type dot com as a D domain name and the server is 8.8.8.8 just kind of uh, just put something normal to it okay so let's do one thing like uh, in our default vpc let's uh, launch ac2 instance and see what happened just close this one okay so i'm higher region uh, and this is also higher region let's me launch instance so i'm doing in default it doesn't matter which vpc i will submit and to use the default one So the moment you launch it, uh, you can see you get two things. One is public DNS name, one is private DNS name. So now let's do one thing. Let's change the DHCP option. Let's see what happens. So we can do edit and we are using our uh, custom one. So now one question, when I change my custom DHCP, what do you think, will it change my public and public DNS and private DNS to the uh, custom domain like cloudtype.com. Uh, take a pause, think about it, and put it in the comment if you think that it will change. And I'll tell you in a minute that uh, it will change or not. We'll find it out. But take a pause, pause the video, and put a comment if you think that it will change or if you think it won't change. And give me the reason as well why you think it won't change or it will change. Okay. So hope you put a comment there. Uh, so let's refresh it and see nothing changed. Even though I launch a new instance, nothing will happen. Why? Okay, so let me take you to the one of the article in uh, AWS documentation. So basically these two fields, these DNS based on these two fields, DNS hostname and the DNS reservation. So if you go to the documentation and if you talk about DNS hostname, this hostname basically tells you that whether you should get a public DNS name or not. So if this field is enabled, then you will get a public DNS name. But when this resolution field also be need to be enabled. So if you read enable DNS host name indicates whether instances with a public IP address get a corresponding public DNS host name. So when this field is enabled, you will get a public DNS name, but only if enable DNS support attribute is also set to true. So that means these both the attributes need to be enabled only then you will get your public dns hostname okay so both of them were enabled we got the public dns uh, now if you read it here 
if either of both of the attribute is set to false, so either host name or resolution is set to false, you won't get the public DNS, one thing. Second, Amazon Route 53 resolver cannot resolve private DNS host name. So you have the private uh, DNS. So this private DNS won't be resolved by Amazon provided uh, resolver, DNS resolver. So you know, in the default one, Amazon provided DNS is the DNS server. So when you disable one of the field, that server won't be able to resolve your uh, DNS queries. So who's gonna resolve that? Instance we receive custom private DNS hosting. So when you disable one of these, so those instances will get a private DNS host name. Okay, and when if there is a custom domain name in the DHCP option set is provided. So if you disable one of them and you have provided a custom domain, if you provided a custom domain in your DHCP option, like in this case we have provided a custom domain, so then it will get that DNS domain name from your DHCP option set and use that DNS resolver to resolve your queries. So let's try that if I disable my DNS host here. So my DNS host is disabled. Let's see what it saying is working or not. The moment I re refresh it, you can see my public DNS name is gone because one of the instances, one of the field is set to false. So I won't get public DNS. Second, my instance receive a custom private DNS. So you can see I got a custom private DNS, which is cloudtype.com and it will be resolved by using the server 8.8.8. So if you are trying this and you are not getting the custom domain name because I've seen so many videos in the YouTube where they say, okay, put a custom DSCP and start getting it. And if you're not getting it, make sure that you disable one of the enable, uh, sorry, DNS hostname or resolution only then you will get it. So hope you uh, understand that how that work and when you get the custom DN uh, DNS instead of the Amazon provided DNS. And I have created a table as well. Let me present it here. So this table talks about that you have, can have three option sets. So let, let me show you one more thing before I go to this table. So in your VPC, you can have your default uh, DSCP, you can have no DSCP or you can have a custom one. So you can also make it that uh, I don't want any uh, DSCP option set. When you do that and you refresh it, so see you are not getting any DNS from anywhere. So I created three different options that DSCP option set is uh, not set or you're using the default one or you're using the custom one and there are different combinations. So if your DNS resolution and host name, they both are set, okay, and I don't have any DSCP option set. So that means I don't have any custom, I don't have a default. So still you are getting the public DNS assigned and you are getting the private DNS assigned. And these are the default one, like us.ec.internal or the region.compute.internal. The moment you disable one of these field, you see you are not getting the public DNS as well as the private DNS. And why you are not getting the private DNS? Because there is no DSCP option set. So if you remember in this uh, line, instance will, instances will receive custom private DNS if there is a custom domain in the DSCP and we don't have a DSCP option set for this particular options. Now if I use a default one, then if both the fields are yes, then we are getting the private and public, but we are getting the default options or uh, default DNS. And the moment I disable one of the field, I get public DNS no, but I still get the private DNS based on what options that you have because I have default one, so I'm getting the default uh, DNS names. If I use my custom DNS option set, when both of them are enable then i'm getting both public and private dns but these are the default one that us uh, region dot compute dot internal but the moment i disable one of these field i start getting uh, my private dns but i won't get any public and the private does based on my custom option set so this table is i tried all the examples and that's what i put it here and it's based on these two particular rules which is mentioned in this uh, uh, article 
and I'll put the it in the description as well so so that you can refer it and you can go back to my video and refer this table and try it out all the conditions so that you understand it properly. So guys, that's it for DHCP uh, VPC DHCP. If you have any question, please feel free to put it into the comment section and we'll be happy to answer your queries. Uh, please like and share my video and subscribe to our channel. I will be posting more videos on AWS networking and uh, on AWS topics. If you would like to have uh, a particular topic you want us to uh, create a video on that, please let us know and we'll be happy to do that. Till then, thank you so much guys. Bye.